Hello and welcome back. This is Stu Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Yes, we have drunk some tea. We've calmed down. Lady he hasn't said we're for D. <laughs> we're no longer arguing. We're eating again. <laughs> uh, okay, so we, I, I did mention before the break that we did have a very special somebody, which I'm about to introduce for you, Nigerian media personality. So it's our, our special brother, you know, and premium hype man, Shea Banks, also known as the Vibes King, showcases the Afro hype music genre. He created on his first of its kind project titled Party and Vibes, Volume 1, which means we can expect Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 20, who knows, making him the first hype man out of Africa to release a solo project. His debut EP emphasizes on the new sound and the rise of the Afro hype, hype rather, genre with influences from Afro pop, Amir Pano, Afro D, EDM, which we're going to talk about, and Afro house genres. Speaking on this project, Shea Bank says, and I quote, it's been a long year and a tough time for a lot of people around the world, so he obviously has a heart, especially Especially become, um, because of the global pandemic caused by the coronavirus. And also this project is an instant party starter kit that was created for people all over the world to have a good time. For the DJs and the party lovers to share good energies and for everyone to be happy as well. While they forget their worries. This EP is the first of its kind and I hope everyone loves it. Please welcome me, Shea Banks. Hi. Welcome. Amazing, amazing, amazing introduction. Yes. Yeah, so Hi. Fun. How's it going? I mean... I'm super excited to be here. Me it's the too. First day in the month, month of love. Yes. Yeah, guys, we're gonna drink some tea. Yeah. Definitely. Guys. So uh -huh. start, start, start <laughs> the month really well. Yeah. But you see, there's some English in your in your re researching you that I was just like, what does this even mean? Like, mm. there's some types of genres that I feel like you are EDM. exposing me to EDM yeah. and um, sounds like a peel. It, it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to encourage you to touch on this table. <laughs> why not? So, um, can you tell me about like those sounds and how you why you infuse them into your, okay, your work? So, I primarily created Afro hype, and it's a genre that embodies other genres. So, what yeah. I do is like I'm just a hype man on the producer's beat. Right. So, the producer can make EDM beats. EDM is electronic dance yeah, music, music yeah. and he can make Afro pop beats, and my piano, which is like the new mm. sound, is the Niger, Niger piano. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. So yeah. we can make different beats, and I just, you know, being the hype man that I am, just jump on those beats, and that's what makes it Afro hype. Right. You know? So it's right. like, it's like subgenres coming together to merge as one genre. Mm. Afro All right. hype. So one thing I noticed, you know, when I was researching about you is like you like things to be different. And, mm. um, you know, I'm a piano is what a lot of people are just queuing in right now. Mm. Mm. And um, EDM, a lot of people don't even know it. Like I said, it's very I white like, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, electronic thing. dance. So you like to infuse different. But do you think that Nigeria has a market for it, for that? Or we're creating a movement now where you begin to make that space for all genres to be acceptable? I, I think Nigeria has a market for it. There's actually an EDM community mm -hmm. here. There's an Afro EDM community okay. here. So I worked with um, Siga Gloren on my project I, on my volume 2 which I'm working on already. Okay, give us I some have, tea. When is it coming out? Yeah, well maybe not this year because I have yet. an album coming out later this mm. year. Alrighty. But on volume 2 I have a guy called Dicelex. Shout out to Dicelex. He's like an amazing kid. Mm. Like there's a community there's Dean, there's Siga Gloren, there's a Jamie Black. There's so many guys in that community. It's like the rock community that's right. sort of budding mm. in Nigeria, right? Mm. So I feel like there's a market for it, but my sound is like a sound that I just don't want to portray as Nigerian. I want to portray mm. it as Africa to global. the world. Global, you know, because at the end of the day, what I make is international. Violence. I'm a shop your dollars. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> I, you see, the thing is, in case people don't know much about you, I mean, I mentioned in the interview before that you are a personality, like a TV personality, radio yeah. and all of that. And I think your name, you might not know this, or maybe people might argue with me, but I feel like your name is more popular than your face. Like, that, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like Shea Banks, everybody knows that. Yeah. So I feel like this is very um, interesting to like. Like, let me, let me just, uh, okay, go no, on. No, no, you go, go, go. I'm so in love with Ima. And I just asked, and I just asked him about wow. Ima, yeah, you understand? Yeah, but yeah. I fell in love with her voice. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, Before her you know. beauty is, mm. I can visualize her beauty way more than I can. I mean, I think, <laughs> you know? I think it happens a lot not just with radio guys it happens with artists as well mm -hmm. you know there's sometimes where you find the talent you, you know find, the voice before yeah, yeah. You, you you start to imagine the the, the artist be, before even seeing them and mm -hmm. you see their videos mm -hmm. and like, oh this is the guy does this that is what affect he looks you like. in any way does that affect i mean no i mean i just like the elements of surprise sometimes mm -hmm. you know sometimes when when people see you they sometimes ah so this is the guy <laughs> but you yeah. walk into a room and then they treat you some type of way then the moment you open your mouth and say share your banks and then they begin they begin to act a different type of way. I mean, Doesn't that affect you? Doesn't I mean, it's Nigeria. When you say, do you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, I even we, back it up. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I just feel like that's a normal thing. Mm. You know, that's a general thing. But I just love the elements of surprise where people expect to see a chubby, mm. big guy. Because your voice is quite yeah. Yeah, yeah, encompassing. You know, so but you see, I've not even landed on my question. No. Yeah, okay. go on. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So my question is, yeah, you've done the radio TV space. Mm -hmm. You are doing the hype man space. Really. I've seen some clips about that and it's wild. Because mm. um, even on Thank my phone, you. I was like, Yay, <laughs> like you're getting hyped through. So you have big energy on that. And now you're going into like the music space as well. Those are very different things. Yeah. So I want to know which one is your favorite? Which one are you taking more seriously? Um, which is the main hostel? Which is the side hostel? Because I know you cannot do all three <laughs> equally. Okay, so I'm not even going to lie. Mm -hmm. um, the media is my baby, mm. right? Like that's my foundation. Right. But right. I'm a hype man and that's like, something that also means so much to me mm. it's like my passion and the reason why i'm making music is not just to be an artist it's to be a it's to be a music hype man an artist mm. that makes music a hype man that makes music and trying to you know also inspire the young ones coming that you can do something so my ep had no collaborations i had no big names my album is gonna have that but i created this project to you know show young people and creators that you don't need to wait for anybody else to get that big break, you mm -hmm. know, just you can do something for yourself, and when the time comes, every other thing else will follow. So for me, the hype is just an inspirational tool. Right. If you allow me okay. to do that. Okay. All right. So let's talk about party. Before that, okay. you mentioned that you had names in the album, and we spilled tea yeah, here, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Wow. you're not like this. Wow. One name. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, T Clack. T Clack. Okay. Okay. Is on okay. The okay. Album. Wait. Mm -hmm. Hold your big names. If We've got a break. really quick break, <laughs> and then we'll be right back. Please don't go anywhere. Hello and welcome back to City T Time on Plus TV Africa. So we do have a special guest with us, Shea Banks, in case you're joining us for the first time. You've missed a bit, but not too much. I can still catch up. And we were talking about um, the people, the names that you had on your album. So yeah, the um, album that's coming up. Yeah, not, yeah. Like, you're not telling us when, but <laughs> it's okay. I mean, because I really want this project that I just put out, Party and Vibes Volume 1, to do like a whole lot for me and for the culture. Mm. Mm. You know, I'm trying to represent a community mm. of hype men who mm. probably have not seen hype music come out like that in different mm. life. I remember starting it in 2019 on a project called, on a song called Vibe and Rhythm. The video's out everywhere. And you know, some hype men started putting out records, but they haven't thought about doing a project. Mm. You know, so I did this one to inspire that generation and mm. my generation as well. But the album is gonna have names like T-Classic. Mm. I think the, that's a big song. I think oh. that might be the first single I might put out. Mm. Right. I've got Crayon, mm. I've got LAX. Mm. Nice. Um, you have soft people, so, soft yeah. boys. Joe Boy. Mm. Well, Joe Boy Oxlade. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, so I mean, Let's just say those names are okay. going to be in the project. All right. Um, at least eight songs. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, you're in your career, right? You've met all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. And the people that want to play on your intelligence, that want to use your platform, and they don't believe that OAP is the chop. So what's the big picture for um, OAPs? You know, how do you really ground yourself? What structure do you think should be in place for people like us to make sure that at the end of the day we're good because we're not going to do this. So I don't see myself doing tea time when I'm 80. You get mm -hmm. me? So what's the big picture? I'm not handling a political show. What do you think is a big picture? How do you think that OAPs can better themselves to ground themselves in such a way that you know, do I'm more. always going to be vibes, good? Vibes volume Yeah, more. that's why I asked the question because I see that it's taking a step in the right direction yeah. and you're mm -hmm. doing something different. Yeah. But a lot of people don't see that. They don't feel like, yeah, that's what we do. Um, so what I'll say first is... Um, it's just life generally. Not everybody can um, be on the same level. So mm. first of all, you need to add value. Mm. You need to create value, add value, and just be valuable generally. Mm. So when you have something people want, whatever space you're in, you're, you're always, always going good. to eat. Mm. You're always going to chop. Mm. So just create value. When you have value, add value. Mm. Always improve because life so is always are you improving lesson. yourself personally? Like uh, apart from you know doing project and stuff, mm. what other thing are you doing now? I'm talking about being academically smart. Mm. Like, are, are you doing courses online? Are, oh, are definitely. Like, like, like it's what I was just gonna say. You know, you need to keep learning. Mm. 
Mm. You need to learn from your mentees, mm. your prodigies. You need to learn from everybody because you never, you can never stop learning. Yeah. You know, so um, you just have to keep improving yourself, just redefining yourself every time and re-evolving. Mm. Because if you don't, That's if you, deep, you know? if you mm. if, if you stay stuck in your ways, that this is how we used to do broadcasting back in the day. This is how we used to do stuff back in the day. If you don't re-evolve with the times you will just not eat. You know, I have a whole lot more respect for you now because <laughs> it didn't say you need to learn from your mentors. You need to learn from your mentees. So mm. even the people that are trying yeah. to learn from mm. you, yeah. learn you need, from you them. Need to Don't learn be from stuck everybody. in your way. Yeah. And you need to learn from your security guys. You need to learn from everybody around, everybody you. around. you. need to. So when I make projects, I study my environment. Mm. You know, when, you, when people say, too late, you he choke. Mm. You need to study your environment. You need to learn from People that are not even in your space. Yeah. You need to learn from your environment and make sure that you're revolving with the right. times. Yeah. That's so what's the future for, for you now? What's 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 the future for Share Banks? Um Share Banks, I'm I'm gonna say there's big things coming. Um mm. uh, I wanna own one of the biggest multimedia firms in West mm. Africa in the next five years. That's for my media side. And I want to be the biggest hype man out of Africa. What about you know, music? Because so. you have banging songs as well, yeah. man. This guy's a musician. I've been listening to <laughs> tracks. Yeah, yeah so, so, you know, I, I, I think I even knew your music before I knew you on radio. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I knew your music before I knew you on radio. I probably heard the voice, but mm. the name didn't stick, but mm. I knew Shea Banks as a musician. Okay. So what's happening with that? Like, what are we doing with the music? Because I know you kind of, is it rap sync or rap? No, or no I'm a hype man. Yeah? So I feature artists mm. and... Like, like I said, this project is like a first of its kind project. Mm. It, it, it would take a lot of people time to understand what Party and Vibes is. Mm. You know, not having artists sing on the project. Oh, but, I get that. Yeah, so it's just hype music. Mm. Where you're, you're just a hype shouting. man on music. Well, yeah. well not exactly we'll shouting. shouting. <laughs> exactly. And, that's, and that's, that's a notion that a lot of people have about hype men, that we're just noise makers. Well, mm. no. we're taste makers. Like right mm. now, you can't go to a party and not have a hype man. If you don't have a hype man at a party, that party is actually going to be boring. So um, we are redefining that. Okay. But the right but bottles, though, the party is hyped already. No, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. There, there, there is Trust something no about, uh, it's, you see, hype men are created for parties that either we don't all know each other, mm -hmm. yeah. and the people that came alone, mm. the people that don't drink, are not intoxicated, <laughs> it sets the vibe. It, right. it helps you laugh. Yeah. with a stranger about yeah. something the hype man just said. If he said, oh, single ladies, well, okay, let's hide <laughs> our face. Or, it really breaks the ice without them even knowing that. So I like that. But I want to go personal. Mm -hmm. So I stalked you a little bit, just a little, little, <laughs> little bit. Um, and I saw the way like your colleagues were talking about it. I think it was your birthday or something. I don't know why you made that video. But I, I was very like taken aback by something some of our, one of your colleagues said. Very pretty lady. I don't remember her name. <laughs> and she said oh, that you don't drink... Oh. You don't smoke. <laughs> and then even in that department is how she said it. So we know the department that we're talking about. Even in that department, you're not giving up like creepy vibes, which is mm. like a standard thing mm. with a lot of men, especially in the media space. Mm. Um, and that you don't give all of that. So, you, you know, that is wild to me because you are Very most, most, mostly in parties. Not that it's not, it's not responsible to do it. Like mm. you can do it responsibly. But the fact that you're not doing it at all, I think there's obviously something there that is pushing such a strict, um, uh, 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 will I say no motive now? So I want to know a bit about that. Like, why are you um, all about no drugs? No, I mean drugs is not good, but no uh, smokes, no alcohol, and all of that. Especially as a hype man, like you're in that um, space. So first of all, that's actually I think you saw that clip. It's off my documentary, my docu right. series. Mm. It's called The Rise of Afro Hype. Mm. So I was talking about the genre, and I had like a few gatekeepers and industry heads, yeah. you know, have conversations. He's about been it. very humble. He basically had huge celebrities in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's not like um, I'm consciously preaching, don't drink, don't smoke. Mm. But uh, I'm just, I don't know. It's just me. I, maybe I might consider myself a lightweight, mm. first of all. And secondly... Uh, I have too much energy to start just overdoing yeah. it. Mm. So I just, I, I try to stay as fit as possible because I'm a hype man. And to be able to give the best, I, I, I always have to stay at premium level. Mm. You know, so I don't, when I'm working, I don't even take sips. Mm. The only thing I drink is water because even drinking can affect my voice. Mm. And I want to always stay at the top. I mm. want to stay at my best so I, I don't do none of that because this is my market. My voice is mm. my market, you know. So I always have to keep it sane, mm. keep it right. 
So, so it's so basically I've, like a work ethic thing. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's just to stay fit and okay. to train my. Really? So before I go for shows, I'm either I, maybe I take a light jog mm. or just work out a little bit, flex my muscles and whatnot. Mm. But I just have to stay fit with my vocals, with my body, and everything. Oh, nice. All right. So being a club junkie, at least before COVID came, mm. um, mm. I, I've seen a lot of very embarrassing moments for a lot of um, you know hype men, where you know they try to hype the wrong way and they get mm. slapped or they get pushed it or they is. get thrown out of the club or I, I know or you know booed. stuff. So what would you say is your most embarrassing moment for you at Shea Banks? Hmm. That thing that happened that you're like, oh man, I need to Okay, I, I think it was a show in uh, 2017. I can't remember the year. I'm not too mm. sure. But um, I, I got on stage. I did like five, I did five minutes. I just introduced myself. And then one guy, one hype man, uh, or someone else, I'm not too sure. Someone else just told the DJ to cut it off. Mm -hmm. Like, cut off the music and... Tell you to leave. Yeah, they just told me that, yo, 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 who's this guy? I beg, I beg. Let him leave. So, I mean, it was quite embarrassing. I think I think I had a fight with, like, some of the guys behind the scene. Like, why would you mm. do that and whatnot? Like, it was quite embarrassing. But eventually, like, that guy now is, like, one of my closest guys. Oh, wow. You know, he really supports what I do. Mm. But he, it was a misunderstanding. So, mm. I, it was quite embarrassing for me because mm. the way I left that show, I don't think I've left that show, any show, show like, mm. that, like that. You know, so, you so. came back stronger. How did that help you to be, you know, the share bank to today? Like I said, add value, you know. Mm. So, I mean... With time, people will see your value. Mm. Those those kind of sh moments will happen. You know, you have experiences where you just have to prove yourself. Mm. Like you might go to a new country. I'm um, going to Ghana next month. You might go to a new country and you don't even know what's gonna happen. Yeah, you don't know how you don't they're know gonna that, accept yeah. you because yes, I'm share banks in Nigeria, but it's out there. You might just you still be. Have how to do you prepare for the for hype and you know when you know there's this event coming? Like you're going to Ghana now, you probably don't speak the language. Do you speak three? Akwaba. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Akwaba. Yeah, you know you, you learn like yeah, yeah. you learn the basics. So how yeah. do you prepare? How do you prepare? How do you people? You study your environment. You mm. start like you get to Ghana. You know what's trending in Ghana. Mm. You know the right things to say. Mm. You get cues from friends and people around you, the promoters. You know what what's popping. The artists that will be coming on stage. You know the music that is trending there as well. So you study your environment, you learn, and then you just apply, implement. Okay, so you are quite popular, obviously. Quite, yeah. yeah. I, mm. I don't know if I'm popular. Yeah, or, you're, yeah. Your name yeah. is popular. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> and you seem to still be really grounded. A lot of the times, I feel like, the, you know, the more advanced you get in the media space, the more like disconnected you can get from reality and just not knowing how to behave anymore, especially mm -hmm. with the men. Um, but obviously that's a bit different for you. And you are, you have the opportunity, well, I don't know the opportunity, but the exposure to even misbehave like that because that's what everybody around mm -hmm. you, most people around you do. How do you keep grounded? Like, how do you keep your, 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 your humility, your manners? How, what, in, what, pushes you to do that? Do you have like a small circle that nobody knows about uh, that, you know, you just go and feel <laughs> for moral, moral standards? Or I'm, not, I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even, I'm not close to being perfect. You mm. know, there's sometimes where I fall, there's sometimes where I stutter, like sometimes I lose track of where I'm coming from, but mm. I always try to remind myself of where I'm coming from because I, I grew up in a block of flats in a mm. very small house in Egbeda, mm. you know, and I'm the first kid from my parents and I'm the only boy, so I have responsibilities. I know that I can't just do anyhow. Mm. And there's sometimes where I remind myself that it's God that brought me here, mm. you know, and I always pray. So I try to stay grounded. I try to remind myself, even when I lose track, even when I, you know, because we're humans, yeah, you know. Course, so yeah. I just try to, you know, just keep being that person or remind myself of who I am and where I'm coming from. So right. generally, that's... that's Do you think that about. the media... Because I've seen that a lot of media personalities are transitioning into music, mm -hmm. right? Do you think that that's a viable option now for people to do? Like, yeah, you mm -hmm. want to do music, but maybe you don't have the facilities yet yeah. or whatever. Do you, do you, would you advise... Because I know people use media space for a lot of things. We've seen them going to acting or mm -hmm. see them going to modeling or, mm -hmm. or even fashion or whatever. Do you think that that's a good space for music and even hype business? Um, yes, I would say it is. It's very risky, though. Um, for, <clears throat> for someone like me who's already established sort of in the media, it's risky for me coming out as an upcoming artist or an mm. artist. You know, it's sort of risky. But if you don't take the risk, it's just like an investment. If you don't make a big risk in the investment, you won't rip big, okay. right? So All if you right. take a small risk, 
you rip small mm. if it's good. Yeah. If you uh, take a big risk, you rip big. Okay. Uh, no, so, yeah. we, we, got, we have two minutes left, and I don't know if you want to talk about the 18 year old saga or you want to just ask your final <laughs> question. Do you want us to talk about it? So, if it's up to you, it's, it's up to you, darling. She wants to get me dragged. I don't. We, we're not going to let her win, are we? <laughs> What do you want to do? Men, we stand together, I'm, right? I'm, we stand together. <laughs> we'll, we'll fight you together. It, okay, it depends. You know, I don't know what he has said before I got here. Yeah. Mm. So, what I'm saying is that 18 is the legal age for any girl to be, and not all relationships with 18 year old girls are sexual. So right, let's it's take okay you back a little bit. Share, share Banks, yeah. do you think it is okay for you, for mm. you, your personal opinion here, to date in your 30s or even old 20s, to mm. date an 18 year old? It's, it's, you know, there's, there's it's no tricky. way, it's tricky, it's mm. tricky. I mean, Regina Daniels was what, 19 mm. when she got married to the billionaire? Mm. And it's tricky, you know, um, I don't, I, don't I can't exactly, sexual, personally, <laughs> personally, I wouldn't, I don't see myself dating an 18 year old right yeah. now because, um, I feel like there's a lot more that that person needs to experience mm. and I may not be able to give it to her, mm. like experience with life. You know, she needs to go through so many phases. Like, she might be smart. She might, you know, have developed so much skills for herself. But she just needs to develop her, you know, her experience with life a mm. little more. before Emotional we can even, yeah, intelligence, exactly. especially. Mm. You know, so there's a... I, I, don't, I don't know if I can say something <laughs> like that. Okay. No. It's all right. Different strokes for different yeah, folks. God will allow you to yeah. change your stroke if you just think <laughs> no, I want to change my stroke. My stroke has been working Girl. for me for the past how many years. What, you've been dating an 18? You didn't... <laughs> no, was she 18? I was, trying to, I was actually making a joke, man. Ah. When I was talking about stroke. But are you sure she's 18, though? My girlfriend? No, no, my girlfriend is not 18, but I'm just saying that I can. Okay. If I wasn't dating, I can date an 18-year-old girl because I really want to see all the people grow. I'm all about <laughs> people's growth, you know? Okay. Cringe, yeah. cringe alert, cringe alert. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. is just dirty and everybody just thinks... We're not talking about sex I'm not, I'm not, Okay, even... It's, okay, it doesn't okay, have okay, to I'm, be I'm sexual. I'm going to come out now. We'll even when I started dating my girl, for a whole year, we didn't have no sex. And that's a girl... They're going to Yanko Sofu. We have to wrap up. We'll talk about it after the show unfortunately but you can join us on social media if you want to unfortunately that is all that we can take on today's episode but thank you so much for joining the conversation um you can catch us on all our social media with the hashtag tea time or twitter us at plus tv africa remember that you can catch up on all our previous episodes including this one in case you came in a bit later and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our youtube channel at plus tv africa you can also watch Tea Time on R2 TV and in London on Ben Television. Yes, we've yep, traveled. Yep. A big thank you goes out to my guest, uh, Mr. Shea Banks in the building. Thank you very and of much. course, my co uncle Eniola, who had to step down due to social distancing. And if you're well, okay, yeah. that can date 18 year olds. And of course, yes, the entire production team doing their thing. Thank you so much. My name is Ifeo Mai. <laughs>